Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here with a project for Not Too Shabby. Do you ever get intimidated by some of those beautiful stamps that might need a little bit of realistic coloring? Well, I do and if you're like me and love those stamps and get them all the time but don't use them as much as you should, stick around to see a fun way to use those stamps by adding just a little bit of color. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Although I have been working on it just a little bit more, my strength in card making is not detailed coloring. Now, if you give me a cute little image that only needs a couple colors and barely any shading, I am your gal. But I buy so many stamps that I love that need a little bit more detailed coloring. And instead of setting those off to the side and not using them because I'm intimidated by it, I want to show you today how you can do a little selective coloring to add color to those types of images and still end up with a fabulous card. Now with that being said, there are many other talented artists on this team who have used this very same stamp set, which is Sweet Birthday from the latest Not Too Shabby kit, Sweet Wishes. And they have colored these up beautifully where it almost looks like you could take a bite out of this cake. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos on the Not Too Shabby channel to see some great examples of those. In today's card, I'll be using this little milkshake image to create a card with just a little bit of coloring, but a whole lot of wow. I'm not sure if you want to call it highlight coloring or selective coloring or spotlight coloring. If you know the name of it, let me know in that description box below. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main products I'll be using today, and then we'll get started on the process. Like I already mentioned, I will be using the Sweet Birthday Stamp Set from the latest kit from Not Too Shabby. I do have that kit linked in the description box below, so make sure to go check it out. Now for my selective coloring today, I am going to be focusing on the blueberries, and I will probably go ahead and say that this flower is blue as well, just to add a little bit more color. For my pattern paper, I'll be using just a little bit of it. I chose this blue and white polka dot from the Dots for Summer paper pad. And then also from the Not Too Shabby shop, I want to do a little ink blending behind my main image. This stencil here is available in the shop, but I got it in a kit a few months ago. I just love kind of this paint swooshy background and I'll be using that with my Gina K Designs Blue Raspberry Ink. To color the little bits of my image that I'm going to, I got out a Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker in Persian Blue, which is number 32. And again, I'm going to do just a little bit of coloring and a little bit of shading. As I go into the process and bring in more products and tools, I will be sure to let you know what those are. But if I ever do leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's card, I'm going to be stamping my focal image and I do this onto a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth. Since I am using those Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, I find this works the best for me. Because it does have a little bit of texture and this is a brand new stamp, I do ink it up and stamp it twice to get a nice crisp black image. And then to make sure my image is dry and ready to be colored, I brought in my heat tool and I heat set that for probably 5 to 10 seconds. Along with my Persian blue pen, I brought in my colorless blender and a little scrap of recycled paper to clean my brush off on. Now, this is what I do when I color and it's quite simple, but it works for me. 
I start by putting my marker where the shadow will be on the berries. Most of these are kind of to the left toward the bottom. Then I bring in the colorless blender and I blend in that dark shade about halfway into the open white area. Now by that time my blender has picked up a lot of blue so I do clean that off and I come back in and I color that lightest part of the blue into the open white area. Now I usually do have to go back in and you know just fix it a little bit maybe blend back in from the dark to the medium blue but then I just clean my marker off or my pen between each of the berries and continue this same process until those are all done. While I work on finishing that up, I do want to give you a heads up that I only show you today how I made one card like this, but at the end of the video, I will have a total of three to share with you that use this same coloring idea. So I hope you'll stick around to see those. After that little sprig of blueberries was colored, I colored in what I think are blueberries in the actual milkshake, and then I went ahead and colored the flower in the upper part of it with that same blue. After I had the image all colored, I took it over to my brother Scan and Cut and had it cut out with just a small white border. Off camera, I cut a scrap of white cardstock to three and a half by five and a half, and I also cut and folded a top fold A2 white card base. Now I need just a little bit of this blue polka dot paper, so I'm going to use my cutter and trim it to a piece that is one inch wide by five and a half inches tall. Using that piece of three and a half by five and a half inch cardstock, I am now going to be doing the ink blending on that watercolor wash stencil. Now I want to adjust it so that my milkshake can kind of be centered over that, but that I still have room on the bottom for my sentiment. So I bring in the stamp set and I just play around with that a little bit, making sure that everything will fit nicely. And once I have figured out where I want the stencil to go, I brought in a couple pieces of blue painters tape to hold that down. Now I started ink blending and realized, oops, I better cover up that top. So I just brought in a sticky note and then I continued to blend until the whole area was covered. Now I should have brought in one more sticky note for those two little bottom areas, but you'll see here that I do fix that kind of extra ink blending. Once again, my mono sand eraser saves the day. I am able to get rid of the little marks left by the over blending. And then I also touched my inky fingers to the front and got some more blue spots on there. When I use this eraser, I usually try to go from different angles gently until the spot is gone. I brought back in my Misty along with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink and the stamp set. I set up my sentiment centered below the milkshake and then I inked it up once again stamping it twice to get a nice crisp black image. Once that sentiment was stamped, all of the pieces of my card were ready to go so I could start assembly. The first thing I did was add the blue polka dot paper to the back of the blended piece and I just let a very small part show, probably an eighth of an inch. Then to give the card some dimension, I cut down off camera a piece of children's fun foam to fit behind that piece and I added that to the back with some art glitter glue. I did press this down well and I let it dry for about five minutes before I went ahead and added glue to the other side of this foam and got it placed on the card base. Now I did place this piece in the upper left corner so there is some extra white on the right side. After that had some time to dry, I brought in foam tape in three quarters inch width and added a piece to the back of my milkshake. This got placed over the ink blended area and then to add a little bling, I brought in some gems from my stash. 
since there ended up being two different blues on my card kind of the royal blue with that little border strip and then the more aqua blue with the blending these gems worked perfectly because it had blues in both colors I added three of those around the sentiment and here's a close-up look at the finished card you'll see on the inside that I used that same milkshake stamp and I did a second generation image in the lower right hand corner I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of how I made this card today and like I mentioned in the video I made two other cards using the same concept where I chose one fruit in each image and then colored just some areas in that same color over here on the left I used a stencil for the background in red I colored in the strawberry and then I made the frosting on the cake red as well over on the cupcake I decided to go with pink now I know cherries aren't really pink but I wanted to use that pink glitter cardstock from the paper pad that came this month and so I thought why can't cherries be pink up on screen now is a couple close-up looks at each of the other cards and the products I used to create them Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.